Hi everyone, thanks for stopping in again. I uh, just wanted to go over quickly a video that I said was going to come out yesterday, but I'm going to do it tonight. It's about the 2020 draft prospects and draft picks from this 2020 draft that the Leafs took. So, I have some notes in front of me. There was just too much to write on the board because of, you know, like where they play and everything, and I'm getting a bigger whiteboard. So, we're going to start off with our first round, 15th overall pick. Rodion Amirov, and he's a left winger. He's actually one of the bigger guys that we took in this draft. He's six foot, one sixty-seven. It it doesn't sound too big, but once you start seeing the size of some of these kids that we took in this draft, you'll you'll see that it's amazing how the league's actually shifting to uh, guys even smaller than what Mitch Marner was. And I think Marner's about five nine, and I think there's a five eight guy in here. So uh, Amirov was he was playing for Salvat in the KHL. He's a plus skater, that's what the scouts were saying when they didn't know much about him even on the broadcast. They announced his name and he they had to look for their notes and everything. So um yeah he's a great skater. He actually led the under eighteen world championships in scoring um, out of everyone in the tournament. So I guess the Leafs were pretty high on him. And as you'll see in this video that um a large portion of these guys are from Europe or Russia, and uh, my grandpa actually, uh, <laughs> he likes when the good Canadian kids are picked, and uh, it's, you know, the CHL has always had great players and everything, and, but I think it's more about, for the Leafs, they're more trying to stock the cupboard, and it's not really about who's going to step in right away, but I've always loved the uh, what the Canadian Hockey League produces, and especially Nick Robertson of Peterborough Peets, who actually made the playoff roster for the Leafs, and he's likely going to crack the lineup. So another great OHL product. So our second, first pick in the second round, he was 59th overall, was Roni Hirvonen. He's the first center that we took, and he's more known as a defensive center, uh, it's not gonna, they said he's not really going to run your power play or anything, but think of him more if he does make it. He's more of your second line, maybe second power play unit, but he's more of a two-way, maybe, you know, try to build him into like a selkie, defensive-minded forward. So he played in Asset uh, Pori in the Liga, in the Finnish Elite League. And he is 5'9", 164, again, a small, statured player. Excuse my dog's barking. <laughs> and our second pick of the second round was Topi Namella. And he was drafted 64th overall, and he's the first defenseman that we took. So he played in Karpat, Finland, which is a very uh, his, uh, historic team there. Uh, Patrick Laine came from there. A lot of great Finnish players have played there. He's 5'11", 156, again, I guess you could say he's on the taller end, but he's 156 pounds. That's a, a lot of room that he needs to work on, a, a lot of room to get bigger, and he really needs to work on um, his skating. So he was actually drafted during his Liga game. During the draft, he was playing, and he was in a shootout. And after he won the game with the shootout, they told him that he was drafted. So um, he's actually friends with, um, Leafs prospect Miko Lettinen, and Lettinen won um, Player of the Year in his league, or top defenseman, and he's coming over to the Toronto Maple Leafs next season, reportedly. Uh, it'd be nice for a uh, big upgrade, in including all the defensive, uh, all the defensemen that we got this year, including Bogosian and TJ Brody. I think he's going to fit in nicely compared to what we had. So, and our next pick wasn't until the fourth round, so that, excuse from here on, my pronunciation, these names are very difficult. This guy is Arthur Akhtumirov. I'm sorry if that's wrong, but he played for AK Bars of the Kozen League in Russia. So he was 137th overall, or pardon me, 106th. And he had a stat line of a save percentage of 957. So that's pretty elite for being that young. He's 19 years old, and he had 
and that was his 2020 stats. So he also didn't get a full season in, but having a uh, 957 save percentage, it's good. And he stands at 6'2", 170, so he's a pretty prototypical size for a goalie. And some would even say he's a, even on the shorter end, because you know goalies these days in the NHL range anywhere from like 6'3 to 6'6". So if you look at like Ben Bishop. So our next fourth round pick was at 122nd overall, another defenseman from the St. John Sea Dogs of the QMJHL. Uh, it was William Villanova. Again, sorry if the pronunciation's a little off. Um, again, another defenseman that we took. And his he's actually being coached on the St. John Sea Dog. Uh, former Maple Leaf goalie Felix Potvin is their coach. So um, he said great things about him. He said he's a great pass first guy he can run a power play and uh, eat up big minutes over there in St. John and he's a uh, 6'1 180 pounds and over his last three seasons he's had 78 points in 121 games so is that going to translate to the pros um, on that pace probably not he's probably not going to be like a 70 point guy but you know he has the potential maybe to be like a top six guy um, maybe a staple on the Marlies, maybe a call-up, but it's always good to have this defensive depth and also right-handed shots. So this next one, fifth-round pick again, and an, uh, another center that we took, uh, one of the another shorter center, 5'11", 163 pounds, um, Dmitry Ovechkinov, <laughs> who played in Russia last year. Um, there wasn't much known about this guy either, except that um, he was getting bigger minutes as a younger player and that he was very calm, composed, and poised. So, um, fifth round draft pick, you know, it's a more of a shot in the dark and you got to trust your scouts, right? So, we're going to go more rapid fire here because these players, they didn't have as much information on these players as you would like them to have. Our next pick was in the sixth round. And 168th overall, VT Miettinen. And he's the right winger that we took in that round. He played in Espoo, Finland, standing 5'9", 159. And he's committed to uh, NCAA at St. Cloud State in Minnesota next year. So he's coming over, playing with uh, American guys, um, trying to go to the smaller size ice because over in Finland, you know, they're playing on the bigger size and if they're serious about coming to the NHL one day, they have to adapt to the smaller rinks. And another sixth round pick, 180th, we got center Joe Miller. Uh, he played for the Chicago Steel of the USHL last year. And again, another center, some more center depth just to bolster up that position. And late in the draft, it's not really about um, position. It's more, um, I'd say, more best player available because you're not looking to look at Joe Miller in the sixth round and say, Oh, he's going to be like our second or third line center down the line. You're, a lot of prospects late don't pan out. A lot of, uh, most of them don't. But, you know, for example, uh, Patrick Hornquist, Andreas Janssen, uh, Pekka Rene, Pavel Datsuk, players like that that got taken like very late, even when like the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th rounds existed before. That was players that were just being scouted that no one knew a lot about, and they turned out to be pretty good. So, and down to our last three picks, we have John Fusco, 7th round, 180th overall, uh, playing out, he's a captain of his high school team at Dexter Southfried High School in Minnesota. Um, again, 5'8", 181 pounds, and he's committed to Harvard next year. And our second last pick, 7th overall, 195th, we got Wyatt Shigota, I'm not going to Try to pronounce that. Uh, 195th overall center. And we, our last pick of the draft, 7th round, 213th overall, we have center Ryan uh, Tverberg. And so when you get that late, you know, again, taking guys that you're modeling after guys who already have success in the league, you know, um, just because they're small doesn't mean they can't make it. But uh, it is interesting, though, because, I mean, it just shows the mindset of, you know, Kyle Dubas and the scouts. They're, they've completely evolved to the modern game. And it's not to say that, like, uh, the next Eric Lindros couldn't come along or the next big 6'4", 
240 pound power forward wing or superstar like um, but it just shows that they're giving all these guys a shot and a fair shake so so that's it for the draft I'm just gonna report on one piece of NHL signing news that I missed by a few minutes from the last video so if any Dadnov who I said was um, a UFA for the Florida Panthers did not get re-signed by the Panthers. The Ottawa Senators signed him to a three-year, $15 million deal. So that'd be pretty interesting to see what he's going to do in Ottawa because he's a really good composed player, like I said, contributes offensively. And it's good for the young Ottawa core there to have some veteran presence. So we'll see if that's the last signing that the Ottawa Senators do. Um, I don't think it's going to be. They have a lot of options that they can go through. So that's going to wrap it up for tonight. I... I'm going to be watching some of the National League Championship Series tonight for the Braves and Dodgers, so I can have a good start to tomorrow, see what's going on. And I will talk about more signings, and I have some other ideas in the pipe. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing, like, comment, all that good stuff. All right, thanks. Have a good night.